It's so quiet here when you don't talk or do anything and when you just stand and try to listen to something. That's what I like in my free time. Just don't think too much about anything and just be really relaxed. Every time I come back, it just gives me more power. Marco always was, even as a kid with 16, 17 years, when stuff got hard, he dig deeper and like really kept working. Yeah, you know what, if you're a Wild fan over the next couple of years, he's going to be an exciting player to watch because he can push the pace. He's not just that quiet kid from Austria anymore, so he's evolved. This is typical Marco. He gives not up, he fights for what he wants to have. Er arbeitet bis zum Umfallen. Das ist Marco. Ja, es ist, es ist eigentlich großartig, was Marco und auch seine ganze Familie da geleistet hat. Weil wirklich von so einer kleinen Stadt mit so wenig Möglichkeiten. Aber Marco war wirklich, wirklich ein Verbissener, ein Kämpfer. Everyone has to earn that spot if you want to make the NHL. For me, it's the same thing. I just try to be the best as I can be and just show everyone that I'm ready. I know that I'm ready. going to the, my hockey rink and that's where I skated for my first time when I was a small kid like I was I think two and a half years old and that's where my dad played um, 15 years. It's a really old rink right now you can see with the wood and stuff but it's a lot of um, history in that rink and yeah it's gonna be nice. My name is Dylan Stanley. I'm the assistant coach and director of player development here for the Veralberg Pioneers. We're in beautiful Feldkirk, Veralberg, you know, about five minutes from where Marco's hometown is. What I like about Marco is he can do things that other players can at a high speed. So when we're working with Marco on his skills, it's really fun to be able to challenge a skill or a technique at a very, very high pace. And Marco loves to, to go rep after rep after rep. Please don't mess oh, up in your drills today, okay? Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Whoa! -ho -ho. You know, this club in the, in the in the 80s and the 90s had a lot of history winning European championships and things like that, and it helps our players to see guys at that level on the ice with them. It also gives them an opportunity to be on the ice 
and, and prepare for their upcoming NHL training camps. When you see him in snow, yeah. just skate into it, yeah. you know? It's actually a capper stuff, he does it so yeah. good. He always comes up high, yeah. there's so much room then. Because yeah. if you're just standing, so easy to defend. Yeah. If you're a Wild fan over the next couple of years, he's going to be an exciting player to watch because he can push the pace. And when your centerman can push the pace in the middle of the ice, at the NHL level, you see the teams that are successful. It's those centermen that push and push and push. It's so special to be here too. And it just brings me like so many memories. And for my dad too, for my whole family. Because when my dad played here, we always came and watched him. Yeah, I was always sitting there. So that brings me some memories. Okay, first of all, I was uh, not a talented guy for hockey, but I played in the first league in Austria. Yeah, when I was close to 37, uh, end of my career, Marco was uh, around three, four. And he was coming in our room after the game and uh, he won't go on the ice. And I can see on the ice very quickly that he understand the game very, very well. Yeah, Marco was actually very klein. The other players were two or three years older, but he was so slow. Ich hatte wie immer eigentlich Angst, weil, weil er hat große Spieler überspielt und dann hat er noch so zurückgeschaut. Und dann hat man schon viel mal Angst gehabt, dass vielleicht der Große jetzt ihn, ihn verletzen will oder was. Aber Marco hat das mit einer Bravour gemacht. Er hat jetzt einmal links, einmal rechts und dann ist der Große in die Bande gefahren und so. Das hat sich immer weiter fortgesetzt und es war eigentlich lustig für uns anzusehen. Ja, Marco ist sicher momentan der Spieler von Österreich, auf den, wo, wo jetzt eigentlich alle schauen und ihn beobachten. Das ist sicher so. Es sind jetzt auch immer mehr junge Spieler, die das Ziel haben, in die NHL zu kommen. Zu meiner Zeit, wo wir gespielt haben, war das kein Ziel von niemandem, weil es war zu weit weg. Und ich glaube, Marco ist der Spieler, dem jetzt alle nacheifern. Grow up playing hockey, and you just see like all the good hockey players in the NHL, who makes the NHL are like the top nations. You don't really see like Austria that many times. And at that time, I saw like Thomas Vanek plays there, and he was like that role model that doesn't matter where you're from, you can make the NHL. And um, especially he's from Austria, and I am from Austria too. So, in my belief, I always said like I can do it too if he can do it. Go! Go, 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 go! So I think I can motivate a lot of Austrian hockey players too. When they want it, I just tell them like, if you want it, you have to believe in yourself and just try to be the best you can be every day. And if you train today, but tomorrow you don't practice, then you know you, you won't get better. For me, it's the same thing. I just try to be the best as I can be and just show everyone that I'm ready. I know that I'm ready. Right now we go to Bregenz and that's where the lake is. And who's coming with you? Um, it's gonna be like one of my best friends. Uh, his name is Felix. I know him since I'm like three years old and um, we grew up together. We played hockey together. This is like a place I usually go like two to four times a week with my friends and then we just have a talk there and just enjoy it there and yeah, drink coffee. <laughs>
Danke. Danke. Tschüss, Patron. That's the worst thing if you are with Marco, because some guys always want to take a picture, and if you are in a talk, then doesn't doesn't fit in. So the lake we are on right now, we touch just three countries. Here is Austria, over there is Germany, and over here is Switzerland. It's so hot right now the last couple of days and uh, um, we lost a lot of water here. So now it's not really deep and like the bigger boats would like stuck in on the ground. So that's why we have the small boats right now. Now we just enjoy the time here now. Thank you, Ben, for the number. I remember when I was 13, my whole family was like at the table, like my two sisters, my mom and my dad. And uh, my dad said, like, yeah, um, Marco is like getting better. But um, Zurich made an offer for Marco if he wants to come to us. But he said, like, um, if he's going, we need like all the support from our family because otherwise it's not possible. I had to move to Switzerland because like the hockey in Switzerland is just then at that age, it just gets more competitive. That was the best decision I had or what I did. I mean, it's probably one of the best organizations in Europe. I think that was one big reason why I got so good because of them. The drive was maybe the hardest thing, always back and forth every day, like for three and a half years. That was hard for me and for my dad and for my whole family. I could see like after two years or three years, my dad physically, he couldn't do it anymore. He wasn't really looking or caring about him. He got like home around midnight. My dad had to take my equipment and do the laundry and stuff like that. And by the time he went to bed, it was probably like one-ish in the morning. And he had to get up like at five to go to work. And that over three years and all like the stress he had and money-wise, he wasn't like the greatest at that time too. So I always say the commitment they gave me, it means a lot for me. This was sein, seine Leidenschaft. Da haben wir nicht viel nachgedacht. Wir haben einfach getan, der Michi ist gefahren. Das war einfach so. Ich war für die Mädels da, der Michi für den Marco. Marco's goal was going to Canada. Then I said to my son, listen, settle down. Have one night and we talk tomorrow, it's your decision. It was 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. He was in my, uh, coming to my bed and he was waking me up and says, Daddy, listen, I go to Canada. I felt comfortable pretty quick. After a couple of games, you're used to that game, what it is like, because it's more on a small area. That's my game too, I really like that. I just started to produce too, so that was good for me. I had no idea who's gonna draft me. Then at the draft, I was telling myself and like to my whole family, doesn't matter who, I'm gonna be really happy because first off, you have to come this far 
I know when you get drafted, it's not over, then you have to earn it. Now I'm proud to select with the ninth pick in the 2020 draft from the Ottawa 67s of the OHL, Marco Rossi. No words, yes. Proud. What they have done for me, I mean, it's incredible. And to say thank you, it's not enough. I say it all the time. They did everything they could and I did everything what I can, or like I'm still trying to do everything I can, but the whole commitment as a family is unique. My side. So it's called here Golm, and it's a really famous ski area and in the summer you can go hiking. Yeah, it's really nice here. Like once we're up there you can see like when we start for the hike, um, it's just gonna be you and the nature. Like you don't need your phone with you and it's so relaxing and you forget like every outside noise and stuff and just um, don't think too much about hockey or anything else what maybe stress me. So here up there you can really relax and don't think about anything. cows they live here up too so uh, when you go for the hike you just pass them and but they don't really do anything to uh, like if you don't do anything to them they won't be mad at you It's so quiet here when you don't like talk or do anything and when you just stand and try to listen to something. Every time I come back, it just gives me more power. Like anything I have in my life when it's really stressful or something negative happens or something, I go up here and you just can like really like zone out and just either it's gonna be you and the nature or just you with friends and the nature. So it's always nice to be here. After the year with the COVID, what he had, was one of the toughest things for the whole family and everything. But I'm very proud how strong he was there and uh, how strong he comes back. So very proud of that. Ja, es ist, es ist eigentlich großartig, was Marco und auch seine ganze Familie da geleistet hat. Weil wirklich von so einer kleinen Stadt mit so wenig Möglichkeiten. Ich weiß doch, ich war öfters auch da, die haben die, die, die Karten von den NHL-Spielern angeschaut und so. Und dann ist dann auch schon einmal der, der Spruch gekommen. 
Das ist typisch Marco. Er gibt nicht auf, er kämpft für das, was er haben will. Er arbeitet bis zum Umfallen. Das ist Marco. Everyone has to earn that spot if you want to make the NHL. For me it's the same thing. I just try to be the best as I can be and just show everyone that I'm ready. You know what, he had a good game at the rookie tournament. He looks much better than he did even last year. So, you know, given the full year that he played in Iowa last year was beneficial to him and he's going to make the most out of uh, an opportunity that he creates. Great serve, racing one, rebound, they score! It's Rossi! Marco Rossi shorthanded and the Wild with 10.59 to go in the first. He's had some adversity. A lot of players do, right? A lot of players do on their, on their journey through this game. And that's why he's playing this game. That's why we all want to play this game. You, you have to go through those adverse situations and, and push through them. He's done that, right? So that's, that's given us great optimism that, uh, that he's going to continue to do that. He missed a, literally a full year of hockey. So, you know, he's in a position right now that, uh, you know, he's got the ball. He needs to just take it now and run with it and give himself an opportunity to play. A lot of people, they really like horses, me too. But at this moment, I was shocked. Like I was watching from the door and one time was the horse behind the net. But we had like a little fence behind the net. So if I missed the net, I would hit like the fence. So it wasn't too bad. I was thinking in this moment, oh my God, my, my son have a really good shot right now. I hope he don't shoot, boom. But I hit the post and I went like over the fence and right on the horse, then yeah, just fell down. So I was like shaking and I ran to my dad and said, Dad, the horse over there, I don't know what's going on. And my dad, well, he was in a shock too. So in this moment, I see 500 meters, the guy coming, like the farmer, to pick up the horse and the horse was down. I said, oh my gosh, please. So after two minutes, get up, he was a little bit dizzy. <laughs> Next day, I go right away to the shop and uh, I, I bought a big net behind the, the goal. And right now it's very funny, but it was really, really hard for me to see that. So there are so, some funny moments uh, with Marco. 